You ready? Set. Let's do it. Get your shit pulled up for Monster Squad. Let's kick it! Hey, Internet. Welcome to the Next Level Nerd Movie Podcast, where we share our love of movies with you. Yes, you, Mike Myers. Most of the time, we discuss, defend, and promote movies we enjoy that weren't considered critically or commercially successful. Sometimes we just ramble. So do us a solid and remember to send us all the likes and positive reviews you can afford. And be sure to share the podcast with friends and family. However, if you'd like to take your nerdiness to the next level, go to patreon.com slash nextlevelnerd and send us a dollar to help us grow and improve the podcast and the overall NLN community. Patreon supporters at every level will receive exclusive bonus episodes of the NLN Movie Podcast every month. And if you can't support us with cash, support us by giving us some love and leaving us a review on iTunes so others can find us easier. We can also be found on Twitter at NLN Movies, Facebook.com slash Next Level Nerd, and at our homepage, NextLevelNerd.com. Let's jump in and nerd out. I'm Justin, he's Mitchell, and this is episode 37, The Monster Squad. This is the final episode of the month of October in this Halloween extravaganza that we've brought you all month long. And if my calculations are correct, we're recording this in the past, but this episode has just released on All Hallows Eve. Ooh, spooky. I know. So, I mean, this is a good one. The Monster Squad. I was, uh, I'm not going to lie. When I, when I put this one on the list, I was a little apprehensive about this because um, it had been a bit since I had seen it. Um, you know, obviously the movie was kind of in my consciousness from when I was a kid. And, uh, you know, I was uh, I was like, okay, we'll put this on the list and see if we ever do it. But I'm glad to see that uh, that that we are doing 1987's The Monster Squad. Well, yeah. Hell yeah. This is like in the the time (laughs) frame that we've been working within. So it all it only makes sense. Right. And this is just oh, this movie it was better watching it like watching it this time was uh just a thousand percent better than any of the previous times i've seen this movie except for when i was a little kid um i'm gonna go ahead and tell you right now folks this episode right here this is worth the damn the the patreon dollar just just to you know drop us a buck if you've enjoyed yourself if you've had a good ride so far we are at the end of October. We did it. We made it from February to October. We're still planning on keeping them coming with more uh, NLN movie podcasts. But this one right here, this is going to be a fun one. Yeah, this is spooky. Mm. Get get scared, everyone, because here's a review. Here's a, I mean, let's just talk about all of the reviews. Give them to me. Ultimately... Down, a dark falls a victim to familiar teen horror tropes. Okay. A brooding uh, lead with familiar... All right, this one, this one, you really need to think about, okay? Again, it's got an F so far, if I'm handing out grades. (laughs) Sorry, I'm drinking. A brooding lead with heart a heart of gold, predictable, uh, jump scares, wincingly bad romantic tension, and, and obvious villains. Mm. Who was there the was romantic a, tension with? Phoebe and Frankenstein? There's a lot of commas in that one. Yeah, okay. sounds like there's a lot of commas. All right, here. Like, what else you got? Give me something good. <laughs> The -the over-the-top acting and unconvincing special effects along with the the lack of the element of horror make the film difficult to watch at times. I thought the the special effects for this movie, for being practical and this being 1987, I thought the practical effects were really freaking good. 
Well, like, I mean, I thought they held up today. Yes, and absolutely. That's not hyperbole. That's not me se- trying to sell you, sell you uh, uh, some shit you don't need. I'm saying this: the special effects in this, the transitions from Dracula to the bat, and and uh, uh, the guy into the werewolf. I mean, come on, come on with that shit. This murky, muddled, muddled attempt of gothic horror set in school. This murky, muddled attempt at gothic set in the school, uh, whatever, set in the school is pretty. It's pretty to look at, but it gets an F in, in subject of uh, scarce. So basically, they're just saying you get an F. Well, you get an F, and that F stands for go fuck yourself, ass bag. Moody and creepy, this gothic thriller is admirable in its effort to achieve subtle scares, but ultimately it's too tame to truly thrill. It's a kid's movie, you shithead. Though it does feature reasonably satisfying finale, a satisfying finale. Okay, whatever. Okay. <laughs> do you have any? Do you have any really good, sharp-tongued, witty reviews? Because so uh, far, I feel like you've thrown up a bunch of softball pieces of shit. Well, I, I feel like all of the reviews are very uh, like wordy. Yeah. Everybody likes to be the uh, the English major. The mood is agreeably creepy, but plot grows increasingly silly. Yeah. <laughs> so the taglines for this one, the end of the world starts at midnight, which, okay, that's freaking awesome. Uh, call them for a monstrous good time. Decent. Okay, you're letting me know. I'm a kid. I'm a kid. It's the late 80s. I like to party. You like to party? Yeah. We watch Nickelodeon. We know what's up. The third and final tagline. You know who to call when you have ghosts. But who do you call when you have monsters? And I mean, that's the $64,000 question. I'm going to say the answer is The Monster Squad. Written by Shane Black, if you can believe it. Shane Black of uh, of The Predator, The Nice Guys, which great movie starring uh, Russell Crowe and uh, uh, shit, what's that guy? I love him and everything he's in. Uh, what's the guy, Mitchell, that I'm thinking of? Um, what's his name? Ryan Gosling. That's it. Ryan Gosling and Russell Crowe in The Nice Guys. Hilarious freaking film. Uh, Iron Man 3, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. Shane Black also of Lethal Weapon 1, 2, 3, and 4. Also, hallowed be his name for giving us Last Action Hero. And also The Last Boy Scout. So he also uh, co-wrote the movie with the director of this movie, uh, Fred Decker, who uh, worked on Tales from the Crypt, uh, the movie House. Remember House? That was a scary freaking movie. My cousin always wanted to watch that. Scared the hell out of me. RoboCop 3, The Predator, the new one that just came out, um, and the Tales from the Crypt uh, TV series. But I already freaking said that, so I'm an idiot. Anyways, the music uh, is basically the same low-budget crap you'd expect from an 80s kids movie. And with this cast, the real focus is on the monsters. But digging through the credits, I found a few gems in there. So sit back and, and see if you, can, if you can follow me on this. Mary Ellen Trainer plays Emily, which is Sean's mom. Well, she was Mikey's mom in The Goonies. She was the police psychiatrist in the Lethal Weapon movies. And she was also in Little Giants and a bunch of good stuff, but in smaller roles. She's pretty much the biggest star of the film. From there, we've got uh, John Grease 
as the Desperate Man and Wolfman. This dude was Uncle Rico in Napoleon Dynamite. And also Laszlo in the movie Real Genius. Jason Harvey, or Hervey, as EJ. And you might remember him as Wayne Arnold from The Wonder Years. And uh, uh, Lorraine uh, Baines, uh, little brother Milton from Back to the Future. Kevin Morton in Pee-wee's Big Adventure. We also have Adam Carl as Derek. This dude played Donatello in Ninja Turtles 2, Secret of the Ooze. Go back and check out our review on that. Uh, Michael McKay as the as the mummy. And you may recognize him as Bane in Batman and Robin. And also Jason 143 in X2, X-Men United. Uh, David Proval as Pilot, <laughs> which he was Richie April on The Sopranos, Snooze in The Shawshank Redemption, and Charlie Zephro in the Billy Zane vehicle, The Phantom. Michael Faustino uh, is the little brother of Bud Bundy from Married with Children, David Faustino. And the critical response on this movie, this may surprise you, Rotten Tomatoes, uh, obviously... Whoa, put the tape down. So Rotten Tomatoes gave this movie a 65% with an audience score of 78%, and Metacritic gave it a 61 out of 100. So why are we reviewing it? This movie was a box office flop when it came to theaters in 87, and it had a budget of $12 million, but only had a box office take of $3.8 million. But even though it's flopped, it has since become a cult classic. And I remember this being a home video rental darling. Like this, this was never on the shelf at my local video store because somebody always had it. Any more critical uh, talking points? Uh, Rodrigo Cortez, an otherwise forgettable and routine horror movie. Down in Dark Hall does provide one spark of cleverness. One spark. Movie starts out. We get this intro text. Dracula's bat transition. We see Dracula. He turns into a bat. It's or from a bat into Dracula. It's fucking awesome. The villagers attack the castle. This virgin girl is brought in before some fucking amulet to read some fucking magic spell. And this opening scene is just intense. Bodies are rising from the dead. People are going crazy. Vampires are getting staked through the heart. And some fucking black hole opens up and starts sucking everyone into it. And you're like, okay, well, what the hell was that? What What's going on here? And we cut to present day. We see these two boys are getting their dicks knocked around by some ass bag bald principal who's giving them the business. And uh, th this is Sean and Patrick. They'll be our main leads. They explain that they have this monster fan club. And that's why they were uh, drawing sweet pics of monsters and shit and not paying attention in science class. So right around the nine minute mark, we finally get introduced to a kid uh, being fat shamed by Wayne Arnold. Uh, and even his friends fat shame him by just calling him fat kid. Like that's this kid's name throughout the entire movie. They just call him fat kid. And then they start tossing around some homophobic slurs and calling each other's homos and faggots because that's just how the 80s were, I guess. And then this badass, super cool kid who should have been played by Corey Feldman. Complete missed opportunity. This kid rolls up in all black on a fucking BMX and it's like he's on a Harley, dude. And he takes a match and he lights it off his shoe and lights a cigarette and you can instantly tell, like, this is the coolest fucking kid that ever walked the face of the earth. This is Rudy. And he scares the shit out of the bullies picking on Fat Kid. Because of this, Fat Kid goes to see Sean and Patrick and ask if this sweet fucking badass can be in their monster club because he saved Fat Kid's ass. So they decide, give him the monster test. So we cut to a uh, cargo plane where Dracula goes all con air and beats up the pilot before turning into a bat and dropping into a swamp with the coffin that uh, was, or with a coffin that was on this cargo plane. And then we go back to the clubhouse. The kids are fucking grilling Rudy. 
and and the audience. I mean, they're giving us all some monster trivia, like how to kill a werewolf and shit like that. And Sean's younger sister, she also wants to be in this highly exclusive club. So Sean goes goes inside and finds out his mom bought him a, a book at a flea market or some shit written by Abraham Van Helsing. And he's just amped, dude. Like he's he's just coming in his pants excited. Because, you know, he's a big monster fan. Van Helsing is the dude in his world. So we see Dracula. He starts doing some spells and shit. And the camera flashes with lightning and his skeleton face. And it's just awesome editing and scary as fuck. Uh, But, you know, we get all this lightning and thunder. Never a drop of rain wherever this movie takes place. So Sean goes upstairs and asks his dad if he's going to take him to see the latest horror flick, Groundhog Day Part 12, which I've only ever seen the first one. And his dad's a cop. His parents are going out for marriage counseling, so he can't take him to the movie. Sean's dad gets a call about some shit popping off at the police station. And there's where we see Uncle Rico. And he starts losing it because of the full moon. And he's like, "Ah, I'm a werewolf. Lock me up. And he steals this cop's gun and shoots it into the air. And this other cop just straight up caps his ass. So there was also a mummy stolen from a museum recently, and we cut to the mummy roaming down the streets. And then this EMT driver goes past hauling the body of Uncle Rico to the morgue, and he comes back as a werewolf and eats the dude. And the wolfman goes to the swamp where Dracula waits for him, and then the mummy shows up, which must have taken forever because this dude's like walking at the speed of smell. So they don't say shit. They just, they make it known. Like all these dudes, you know, Dracula, the Wolfman, the mommy, they're just like, yeah, what's up, bitch? And they make their way to the water's edge and Dracula like summons the coffin of Frankenstein's monster uh, out of the water by the creature from the Black Lagoon. And it's like Avengers fucking assemble, bitch. And they juice Frank up with some lightning and the monsters are all just fucking jazzed that they're all together And they're ready to rock and fucking roll. Shit is about to hit the fan. So Sean's sister Phoebe is getting tucked into bed by their mom. And Sean hears his parents fighting. And his dad tells his mom about the mummy and the wolf man and all this shit going on. And Sean sees this message over. This is an 80s thing. People used to, when the the phone was in the kitchen, you know, and people would write a little message like, oh, so-and-so called for you. Well, so he's got this message from some dude named Alucard, which is Dracula backwards for the uninitiated. So some kid goes to his dad in the middle of the night and he's all like, oh, there's monsters in my room. And the dad opens his closet and the mummy's in there. And it's a pretty creepy shot the way it's constructed. But I mean, it's wholly unnecessary, never comes up again. But... Totally worth every every second of it. This movie is only like, would we say like an hour and 20 minutes long? Like it's not long at all. Yeah, an hour and 20. So Sean assembles his monster squad with Patrick, Rudy the badass, fat kid, and his little sister Phoebe. And they're going to go kick ass and take names. Like it's, it's up. It's on now. So we look at Dracula has found this sweet fucking Airbnb Airbnb that he's renting out over in the creepy district of this town. And Dracula is like tucking Frankenstein into bed and he tells him, go find Van Helsing's diary, which is the book that Sean has, but he can't read. But first of all, why does everyone think that Dracula has a... Like, you tuck Dracula to bed, and that's it. Well, Dracula's like, uh, it's about to be daylight. I've got to go to bed. He's like, oh, Frankenstein, get your ass up. Go do some shit. Go find this book that Sean has, because he can't, it's in German. He can't read it anyways. So, the kids have this creepy old German neighbor that they go and ask to translate it. And this dude is creepy as shit. And so the guy reads the book for him and it says that there's an amulet from the beginning of the movie that's a talisman to ward off evil or some shit and it's indestructible except once every hundred years at midnight, which I love that they don't, they just say every hundred years at midnight, like midnight is a universal concept all over the world. 
So uh, once every hundred years at midnight, the amulet can be shattered and evil can take over. So this creepy ass German guy tells them that the anniversary just so happens to be tomorrow. Biggest fucking con- coincidence in the world. So the kids are going to get a virgin to read the text and stop the evil or some shit. But who cares? We're really only here to see the monster battle. So Frankenstein goes to a little girl picking flowers, just like in the uh, original Frankenstein movie from, I think it was 1939. But it's Phoebe and she introduces him to the monster squad. Frankenstein's cool. He's just misunderstood. He's not really evil. At this point, the little girl uh, calls the calls the boys chicken shit, and for some reason that was always the most hilarious line to me. Like this little girl who's probably like six, and she's like calling these older kids chicken shit. And the number of times this movie features swearing children is just off the fucking charts. And Frankenstein gets all emotional and befriends the kids, accept him for what he is. And it's just a good thing he wasn't gay or they may have gotten violent. Um, So Dracula's ready to take over the world or whatever his plan is. It doesn't fucking matter. It's just, it's Dracula. He's out there doing shit. He's evil. So then we get a montage. I mean, it's an 80s movie for kids. So we get this sweet montage of the kids preparing to take on the monsters by making wooden stakes in shop class, writing letters to the military and Cran that are like, oh, come save us, monsters are attacking, and printing monster squad business cards, making silver bullets in shop class? Okay, apparently you can just make bullets in school now. Um, Stealing a bow and arrow from gym class because archery was a thing they used to teach in public schools. And... So Dracula has Uncle Rico tied up to a chair and is about to go suck the blood out of some women he's holding hostage. And Uncle Rico like tries to escape and he gets out. And Sean's dad finds out that there's a hearse driving around town and it's doing creepy shit. But Uncle Rico calls him at the police station just before he has this pretty awesome transformation scene that, in my opinion, rivals American Werewolf in London. Like, I thought the transformation was just great. And he tries to warn Sean's dad about the impending doom, but his dad's like, yeah, whatever, monsters, that's stupid. So Rudy and Patrick try to convince Patrick's sister to help uh, help them out by blackmailing her with nude photos because the 80s were just a different time when this was just passed around as, as good old-fashioned family revenge porn. We're all just having some fun here. Just some fat shaming, homophobia, little girls swearing, blackmailing chicks with nudes. That's just kids being kids. So they find Dracula's place and and kick Wolfman and the Nards. And the rest of the monsters come after him. They escape through a hidden passage in the house to find the amulet. Uh, Frankenstein got killed in the fray, but it's one of those, oh, you know he's going to be back kind of things. So Dracula catches them, but fat kid, well, fat kid, he always has a slice of pizza in his pants pocket. Get it? Because he's fat. So the garlic in the pizza burns Dracula's face and the kids escape and the kids haul ass and meet up with Rudy and Patrick and his sister and the weird old German guy. Uh, The mommy jumps onto their vehicle and goes all T-1000 like And uh, Rudy takes his wrapping and ties it to an arrow, shoots it to the tree. Mommy unravels. It's cool as fuck. So the dad and his partner are going to find the wolfman when they almost hit another car. But it's Dracula's hearse and they phase right through it. And he goes to Sean's house, throws fucking dynamite in their clubhouse, destroying it. The dad pulls up in the cop car and Dracula throws more fucking TNT at this squad car killing his partner. And this movie is meant to check all the boxes of horror film cliches. So the black guy dies first. And come to think of it, he's the only black guy in this whole movie and the only character that dies. Like, where where does Dracula get all this fucking dynamite? Like, Wiley Coyote thinks this guy's methods are extreme. So there's this big showdown in the town square, which is actually shot on the clock tower set from Back to the Future. And if you watch close, you can see the clock tower in the background. 
And Sean, Sean sees the wolf man and he blows his ass up. But then he goes all T-1000 and puts himself back together somehow. They never explain that. Patrick's sister reads the German shit or whatever to open the portal to Limbo or whatever. He was in the amulet. I don't know. I quit paying attention to all that shit a while ago. But Patrick's sister isn't a virgin because she lied about some dude she fucked. So they get Phoebe, the little girl, to read the German shit. And the old weird German guy guy helps her. Rudy shoots the Wolfman with that silver bullet he made in school. And he turns back into Uncle Rico and thanks him for killing him. And Fat Kid shoots the creature from the Black Lagoon in the torso with a fucking 12 gauge. And effectively saves Wayne Arnold from certain doom. The bullies now respect Fat Kid. And they tell he tells him, my name's Horace. And cocks the shotgun. He's just a total badass. So Dracula's about to kill Phoebe. Calls this little girl a bitch. It's kind of fucked up. She's like six years old. And just then Frankenstein shows up and tosses Dracula into a picket fence. He's fucked. Phoebe finishes reading the German shit and all the bad guys get sucked into this black hole thing or some shit. I don't know. Van Helsing pops out of the black hole and kills Dracula like a credit stealing bitch. Like this movie wasn't about you, Van Helsing. What a fucking prick. Frankenstein ends up dying for real this time and everyone's sad, especially Phoebe. But I mean, I just I can't get past the uh, the scene stealing of Van Helsing. Such an asshole. So there's all this paper all over the place, like in Ghostbusters 2, because I guess that's the best way to show that the town has been through some shit, is that everybody throws out their paper recycling into the street. And the army rolls up and is like, where's the monsters? What the hell's going on here? And Sean is all, we're the monster squad. And they high five and the credits roll over this really bad original song about the monster squad. And this ending always makes me think of the uh, the Ninja Turtles Cowabunga high five closing at the end of the TMNT movie. And obviously, you know, 1987 was a very different time. But if you grew up in that era and looked past all the blatantly offensive shit, it's a solid flick. I tried to watch this with my son last year because I remembered seeing it when when I was little and loving it, and he was seven. And I had to pause the movie several times to answer some questions he had, like, what is a homo? What is a faggot? What is a virgin? And I also had to tell him that I ever, if I ever heard him use the word faggot to disparage or belittle someone, he would be in the deepest shit of his life. Like, to me, that, that word's close to, but not exactly on par with, the N-word. It contains some hatred, but not as much history as the N-word. And so while I enjoy this movie, I'm not a fan of those homophobic slurs i'm just not a fan of putting anyone down for being different and trying to raise my kids to be good people whatever i'll get off my soapbox now but i'll tell you what i won't do mitchell what won't you do (laughs) i won't stop because mitchell don't stop baby because you're the soapbox that you're on, we love it. Well, Mitchell, I'm going to go on a rant. Oh, okay. Go on a rant, baby. You missed your cue. Dun! We'll fake it. This movie is a celebration of the classic Universal Monster movies and their crossovers like Frankenstein meets the Wolfman and the House of Frankenstein. When this shit came out... It was like a brilliant introduction to those movies for me. And it got me interested in watching the old black and white films from the 30s and 40s. And sparked my interest in monster movies overall. And it it was like someone sat me down and was like, Hey kid, check this shit out. Look at these awesome characters you didn't know existed. And you don't know shit about. And got me excited for them. And after watching this, I remember catching a Frankenstein marathon on Turner Classic Movies or TNT or some shit. And loving most of those movies. And I bought Mary Shelley's Frankenstein novel. And it was the first novel I ever read as a kid. And I was hooked. I finally got the joke about the the Count on Sesame Street. I always wondered why he talked with a thick accent and was a vampire. And after after seeing this movie, it introduced me to the world of monster movies. 
And I understood that that was just an impression of Bella Lugosi's Dracula. But to be perfectly honest, until 2004's Van Helsing starring Hugh Jackman and Kate Beckinsale, this was my favorite monster mashup movie. These characters were basically part of the first connected film universe, which Universal tried to reboot with the recent Mummy movie. <laughs> Sounds like he slammed into something. Mitchell got up to use the restroom. <laughs> this movie makes me nostalgic for those coming-of-age adventure movies like Goonies and Stand By Me, but also makes me wish that Universal could get their shit together and begin producing good interconnected monster movies again. It's not that hard, and from what I've seen in the previews of the Tom Cruise Mummy film, it looks like they did a good job with some of the connective tissue, but failed in the execution. But I, I still haven't seen that movie yet, and I still haven't lost hope for it just yet. So, if they would do something again like Monster Squad to reintroduce these characters without like any other origin story movie, they could totally reintroduce these characters and bring them to the forefront of pop culture once again, like Marvel did with Spider-Man Homecoming. And the premise of seeing a Frankenstein, Mummy, Dracula, Wolfman, Creature from the Black Lagoon, Dr. Jekyll, and Mr. Hyde, and Van Helsing rebooted, rebooted for modern audiences is genius. However, they need to nail the execution and plan long term. The idea of an intriguing monster or of an integrating a monster squad style movie to fight against these villains would be amazing. These films do not need to be scary. Horror films have evolved past the monster genre, but the genre is still right for the picking due to the timelessness of these characters. But for successfully resurrecting these characters for audiences in, in the 1980s, keeping them alive for kids like me, and adding a delicious layer of 1980s cheese. Oh, we thank you. End rant. Good call, babe. Right there. I think that encapsulates everything that you and I basically would want on any of these characters. Yeah. I mean, they do they do each and every one of these characters justice. It's such a delicious film. Mm. It's like how DC DC does a really good job at making um, animated movies, and Marvel does a good job at making uh, live action movies. You're not wrong. Why change it? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Exactly. So, anyways... This uh, this concludes our Halloween episodes of uh, of the Next Level Nerd Movie Podcast season one. I might add the first season. Well, we might actually have a uh, bonus episode. You don't know. You don't know what we're gonna do. I don't know. So, uh, time for those plugs that you love. Let's put. A nail in the coffin of Dracula. Wait, let me do that again. Let's stake this vampire in the heart and put his ass to bed for good. Time for the <laughs> plugs. Just a reminder, check us out at nextlevelnerd.com where the opinions are so good they ought to be facts. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share all of our podcasts such as the Nerd Herds Gaming Podcast, Sugar Frost, and Serial the TV Podcast, which we'll be working on Daredevil Season 1, 2, and 3 very soon. Uh, and three, two, one, lay on the live action role play podcast. We want to keep creating quality shows for our listeners and keep growing the NLN community. So we just want to ask that if you could help us out, please go to patreon.com slash next level nerd and drop us a buck or two. Donating at any level will get you exclusive access to bonus episodes every month. And if you can't support us with cash, support us by giving us a review on iTunes so others can find us easier. Like I said, be sure to like, subscribe, share, so that you can catch next week's episode when we'll be talking about the Iron Giant. Until next time, spread the word, spread the nerd. Representing Cashmere 1-9.